We want to speak on the subject, do you know about the valley? And I'm sure that everyone has had the valley experience. Well, let me give you a little archaeological background before we get too far. As we went Jordan, we discovered, as we had mentioned to you before, that there are a number of hills and uh, rocky places, hiding places. Uh, some were not as obvious because it would be a long slope, but someone could be at the top of the hill and get down to you to... Uh, robbers would be able to come and rob or steal. In some cases, some people have been reported to have been left naked in the earlier days. Also, there was a place that we visited called Petra. People actually lived in the rocks. So if you went through the valley and the people were living homes dug out of the stone mountains. And the idea there was that many times criminals would be there and they would be able to come and uh, do harm to you. That's one thing that many of the scholars are talking about, but the other thing is that when we talk about the valley of the shadow of death, we are not just talking about uh, physical death. Because physical death is not the greatest destroyer of us, our society, and people. Uh, we are talking about a death that comes through other events. Uh, somebody asked, you know, if we're under this shepherd, why are we even going through it? And the reason we're going through it is because we do our own thing and we are made free. And almost every crime or every event that happens in our lives that is negative occurs because of something our society has done to God's creation. Whether it's the food that you eat or the air that's now polluted or, or what, however we individually live, we discover that those events cause us to uh, suffer and we want to blame God. One illustration given by a preacher some time ago was about this woman, elderly woman, who was coming to church, and she fell off the steps, broke her leg, and eventually died. And the members and friends were coming around trying to explain what God had done and why God had done it. You know, God caused this to maybe bless somebody else. Or God caused these events. And, and they were sort of justifying it by saying, it, sort of saying that God was responsible for the woman falling off the steps. So the preacher went back home and reworked his sermon and said, uh, told the people that God did not break the, the lady's legs. Amen. And it's a tendency for us to always want to know what God did. God did it. But we have to understand that there are various forces of evil, two major forces. Two major forces. One is good and one is evil. Amen. And Satan is as active around this world as God is. Amen. And we also represent our own evil for what we have done to our society. Amen. And the fact that we ignore God, which creates another evil for us. But uh, we want to, uh, so when we talk about the valley of the shadow of death, we are talking about much more than anything physical, amen. You know, we, we are talking about how the enemy is able to hide behind the rocks, amen. That enemy could be uh, anything. The enemy swoops down on your pre the prey in the valley, okay. And that valley is our valley of the shadow of death. I don't know, uh, when I looked at it, I'm thinking about a, a, a shadow or something that, that uh, you ordinarily create. But if it's a valley of the shadow of death, then it, the situation itself has a shadow of our lives. Everyone, every one of us in this place has some sense of that shadow over us. Amen. Uh, it's, uh, uh, you enter it, you are immediately conscious of your vulnerability. When you enter into that valley, you know that you, it may be an illness, a time of deep, deep discouragement, major failure, a loss of a personal relationship. It may be a great, any, any of those events that could happen to you. Some writers have 
uh, said that the, inter interpret the translation is wrong. It shouldn't be the valley of the shadow of death if they translate it right. They said it should be called deep darkness. Deep darkness as opposed to the valley of the shadow of death. And, and that gives you the idea of what we are talking about. Uh, if you have been to the valley, amen. And I believe that everyone here can say one time or another in their lives, if they've lived long enough, they have been in the valley, amen, of the shadow of death, amen. And, and, and so it, whatever it might be in your life, it is that period when you can feel very much alone as, 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 as a, 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 a Jonah in the belly of the well, amen. That dark doom by yourself, rejected and not knowing what to do. And also maybe even being like uh, Job, looking at God and saying, why did you even let me live? Amen. We all go through those kind of experiences. Today I'm not here to make you feel sad. I'm here to show you that there is some value and power in our relationship with God. Amen. The, the psalmist says here, uh, Yet though I walk through, and I want you to always keep in mind what he said. He didn't say I'm walking in. Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Amen. It means that it's not a place that I'm parking. Amen. You know, you know, we're going through something right now, but we're not parking there because we believe that we're going through there. Amen. 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 And then yet yeah, though I walk through the valley, amen, through that valley of the shadow of death, that valley of difficult times, that valley of concerns and maybe even disappointment, I am going through it. And as long as I know I'm going through it, I can keep my head up high and my spirit's going and the devil's a liar. <laughs> Scripture actually tells us that we're able to do it. We're able to walk through it for three, three reasons. He said, first, I will fear no evil. Amen? Ah, devil, you can do what you want. Because the Bible tells me, fear no evil. Amen? He said, fear not. And thy God, and we give thee aid. The scripture says, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. Fear not, fear not, fear not. God tells us to fear not. He said, don't go by what it looks. That's what man sees. I am in charge of this world. I am the one who makes the decisions. All you need to realize, I am the one, and stop looking at the world and yourself to come up with a solution and believe that whatever it is, I can make it, I can break it, I can fix it. Yes, I'm with you all to the ends of the earth. Now, the reason I can walk through and feel no evil is listed in the next verse of the scripture. He says, first, I feel no evil because you are with me. Amen? There ain't no nammy pammy somebody. You got God with you. It's not your brother or sister who might be sick the time you get sick or going through changes while you're going through changes. You're looking for help. They're looking for help. Everybody's looking for help and you don't get any help. Amen. I, I, I always tell this story. My two friends in Lincoln University. Amen. Two friends, nice, tall, six foot some guys. They were my bodyguards, my friends, and my protectors. And on campus, I had a little bit of an attitude, so I had a few people who didn't like me. Amen. You know, my man of me, I don't know. But anyway, they, 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 they didn't like me. And, but I didn't worry, didn't feel about a thing because I was able to walk through with my buddies on my side, Haddon and Harris. Amen. And we walked through, but one Thanksgiving, they decided to go home for Thanksgiving dinner. And I was left on the campus all by myself. I stayed in my room all Thanksgiving. But I want you to know one thing. See, that those friends were, are not always with you. Amen. But my God said he'd always be with me. And, and, and when I walked through the valley and shadow of death, I said, the Lord is my shepherd. Amen. Uh, I know he's with me in the morning. 24-7 God is with me. 
Thanksgiving, Christmas, even the 4th of July. Help me, somebody. God is with me. But anyway, and, 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 and so I don't fear because I have his presence with me. Amen. And, I, and then it says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Amen. Now, you know, the, the staff is, 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 the, is uh, the second one, the, the, the rod is uh, some people call it a club. Amen. And the rod is designed to protect the sheep from the enemy. The staff is designed to protect the sheep from himself. You, you didn't hear that, did you? You see, you need both of them. He said, I, I, I have no fear because I have first your rod, which will ward off the enemy, the lions, the tigers, the bears, or anything that may come in your direction. And my rod is really my word in today. And you're my word. If you listen to it and read it, it will give you what you need to get that enemy. And of course, the enemy may not be hiding on a cliff. The enemy might be sitting next to you in the pews. Ah, oh, yeah. The enemy might be sitting with you at your breakfast table. Amen. Uh, on your job. And the enemy is sick. It hides behind goodwill. But you ought to know it's the enemy. Because if you listen carefully, you'll hear some ill will. Amen. The enemy talks in devil tongues and makes you think that they are so fine and righteous and pure. But the truth about it, the end results show you that the enemy is trying to steal, steal, rob, destroy your joy and you and what you get in. So if you are with somebody and they start talking and you get confused and feel bad, you tell them, get behind me. I. Well, I just got a little more here on this Sunday. Amen. So, so see, the rod uh, corresponds to the God's delivering. He protects us from our enemies. He defeats them. One writer says they're personal enemies. Intangible enemies. Oh, they're out there messing with you. You can't, can't put their hand on it. Oh, you know, they, 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 they mess up your program. Amen. But God protects us from them. Uh, and, and he doesn't club them. But the power of his Holy Spirit watches over us who believe in him. Sometimes he protects us from ourselves. We, 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 the, we the worst people in the world. Amen. We do more harm to ourselves than anyone else. We do it by what we read, what we look at, and who we talk to. Help me, somebody. Uh huh. Some of us have a life, that what I would call the, 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 the uh, uh, Texan mentality. Amen. We're not just texting when we're driving. We don't have to have a cell phone. We're so busy texting that we get caught by the enemy. You know what I'm talking about. All right, let me go on. Amen. So, 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 when we're going through the valley of the shadow of death, we know that there is sickness and death and terminal illness, but we are able to say with confidence anyway, that rod does comfort me and will comfort me. Amen. Because God's rod is powerful enough to provide us comfort and victory. Now, I don't know about how many of you have been trying to fight the battle all by yourselves, but you discover one thing. It's, it's hard to fight by yourself, isn't it? Uh, it's hard to fight. I'm, I'm, I'm mean enough to want to fight by myself. I don't, I don't want to be bothered with anybody, but I got to bother with God. Amen. Amen. And, and so that rod, rod is like when I was in the Jordan, the, 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 the Bedouins, this group of people living like they did back in Jesus' time. Their shepherd boy was able to stand there watching about 50 golden sheep together with nothing but a rod in his hand. Amen. And that's a man watching over that, but God watches over all of you. And we got to feel it. You see, it's not just me talking. 
It's not just powerful music like this that we shout and feel good about and, and, and walk out of here and let the devil smack you side your head and you ain't got no power. Amen. If you feel it in your bones and your spirit, you can tell the devil, go to hell. I, get behind me, Satan. And I didn't cuss because that's in the Bible. Yep, Amen. Right. And so, so, so he said that, and, and then, but also, we have the staff. Now, some of you know Moses with his staff. Amen. God asked him, use what you got in your hand. Amen. Because that wasn't so much what he had in his hand. It was what was in him that God used to do what was in his hand. And then throw it down and ate up the sticks of the enemy. He said, now you're at the point of you can't go any further. Anybody been there? You, you just hit your old block. It, it, it doesn't look like there's any further way to go. Even you think that God led you this far and all of a sudden, I'm here. Husband's not acting right. I don't know what else to do. Job's not acting right. I don't know what else to do. And you're right there. God told Moses, raise your staff. Raise it. Raise it. All we need to do is lift Jesus. Raise your staff. And there were the barricade of water parted the way. I've seen the lightning flashing. I've heard the thunder roar. He promised never to leave me. So when I'm at that roadblock, I am not going to let the devil break my spirit. Because I believe in the mighty. Do you believe in the mighty God? If you if do, that means I do. Do you believe that God can beat any enemy you got out there? Amen. I thank God I have him. His rod, his staff, they cover me. And I don't have to worry about him laying it down because he doesn't get tired. Sometimes I cry and cry all day long. But he comes when it's time to come. Now, now, let me tell you about this staff. The staff has points on the end of it. The God, uh, uh, the shepherd takes and hit the, hit the sheep sometime to protect them from themselves. Amen. God will slap you a couple of times. Any you ever been slapped by God? I've been whipped the whole other time by God. That's how come I can preach like I can today. Amen. God that whipped the sermon into me through the years. Yeah, see, he does that to protect us from ourselves. You see, the sheep will wander off out of the area of protection or fall in a ditch or even go out where other animals will get it. So he take this thing and prod them and he will hit them. And sometimes God's got to whop us a bit. Anybody been whopped? Help me somebody. Yeah, but through it all, one thing I've learned is that it said to us is that, that no matter what we go through, no matter how rough it is, no matter how many problems we get, we know that if God prods us, and most of the time God is trying to tell you if you're his. Here's another thing I'm going to just drop in. You know, sinners don't have to worry about much except hell. They don't, because the devil ain't gonna mess with them. The devil already has them. You know? So they ever had to do things and everything. Here you are, believing, loving the Lord. You get sick. You have this thing happen to you, and that other thing happened to you. It gets kind of confusing, doesn't it? You know? But the truth about the matter is, is that that God will not give you more than you can bear. Amen. The, the, the enemy will try to intervene on this and undercut your blessing. Amen? Under by confusing your church relationship, your God relationship, your relationship with the spirituality, throwing a whole lot of stuff in your way to undercut you. That's what John Second says. Don't, don't let anybody come your way. Don't even wish them how to do that. 
if they're not about the word of God. Amen. So yes, yeah, do I walk through the silent shadow of death. Yeah, do I walk through some hard times, uh, physical afflictions and mental afflictions and social afflictions. Yeah, do I walk through. But my God knows I'm walking through. And I know I'm walking through. And I know that God will bring me through. How can I stand here and preach with everything going on? Because I know. Because he said it to me. He said it to me. And I say to you, if you've been through the valley, if you know the valley, and you know God, you should know that, yea, though you walk through the valley and shadow death, don't feel any evil. Was his rod and his staff to comfort you. I'm finished.